everybody and good afternoon. Welcome back to Simple Art for Adults. Uh, it's been a little bit since I put up a new video, so I figured it was just about that time. Um, today I've had some people ask me about the different tools and things that I use for adult coloring or drawing or uh, things like that. So I've decided I would take a little bit of time and show you some of the really, you know, cool and nifty stuff that I keep around to help me out whenever I'm uh, coloring some something like this. Um, first things first, um, right now I've been using my uh, Marco Renoir, which are oil-based pencils, and they tend to be a little bit smeary. So if you're coloring, right, let's say that you're over here and you're, you're coloring this and you move your hand, you're you're going to smear. And you may not notice it right away. And I, I know I have a little bit of smear mark like right here on my paper, and, and you probably can't see it, but it's definitely there, and I know it's there. Um, another place, uh, like right up here on this little petal up here, is another place where I have um, accidentally smeared my color. Let's see if I can zoom in enough for you to be able to see that. If the camera will focus on it, you can see it's a little bit lighter in that one little tiny spot than everywhere else. And that's because I smeared the color. Um, so what I do is, and you, you know, it's absolutely possible for you to use something like uh, a piece of paper. You just take, you know, like I have an extra piece of cardstock that I used to doodle on. Uh, you just put that down and you rest your hand on it to color. Um, unfortunately, the paper, the actual tooth of the paper can pick up the oil and move it around anyway. So what I found is, is I went to my local dollar store and I grabbed this. And I'm sure that if you ever use this as a kid, you know exactly what this is. This is tracing paper. And it comes in handy for doodles too. So if you're, you know, want to transfer a drawing to another sheet of paper. And this is really slick. This is like, um, this is almost like wax paper, except I can see right through it. So this is what I rest my hand on uh, whenever I'm coloring a picture. So I think this is pretty groovy. I can see right through it so I know exactly where I am and what I have to do and it doesn't block my view. This is cool stuff. Um, and like I said, this one little piece will last for ages. So I do keep this around. Um, another thing that I like to use, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, but um, the pinkish color stripes here on, on these little parts, these pink color stripes. Uh, see how smooth those look? Those almost look like paint. And that's because after I colored them with my oil-based pencils, I used something that's a nice little trick. It's called Gamsol. And basically, this is odorless mineral spirits. It's more or less paint thinner. Um, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby for $7.99. Um, you can probably find it elsewhere online cheaper than that. I just happened to be in Hobby Lobby and realized I needed it, so that's where I grabbed it. For this, I don't use it out of this bottle, though. What I like to do, excuse me, is I put it in this little Tupperware container. And as you can see, so look at the Gamsol. And then as you can see, there are cotton balls in the bottom. And this is so, like, let's say that I'm working or whatever and I accidentally tip it over. I'm not going to have flammable Gamsol all over the place. It's, it's in the cotton balls. So, um... Then what you do for this is after you've colored your, your layer onto your paper, take a paintbrush, and this is a cheap set I got at Hobby Lobby again. I think I paid a dollar for a set, or I paid four dollars for the whole set of brushes, so it was like a dollar a brush. And you just kind of dab your brush down in the cotton ball like this, and the, the cotton balls are only damp, they're not soaked. And then you make sure you don't have too much, and you just come right over the top of it. And it's just a perfect amount. So this way you're saving yourself towels and stuff because you're not having to dab your brush. Um, you don't have the risk of having an open flammable solvent on your desk. So this is another really, really cool little thing I like to do. Baby food jars work for this. Um, so if you have anything like that laying around, I just happen to have a whole bunch of these little containers from when my children were really small and we used to put snacks in them. So. And of course, I do actually keep paint thinner, which I believe is just a little bit stronger than Gamsol. It's pretty much the same thing. It's petroleum distillates. Um, I also keep that around. Um, another little cool thing I just recently got from Amazon for about $5 is this little Ohuhu um, eraser. I, I know this looks crazy, and you're thinking, what in the world is that for? Well, it's electric. It has batteries in it. So when you push the button, the eraser part spins. This will erase 
Um, it does pretty well with most kinds of color pencils. It doesn't it doesn't do so hot with Prismacolor. The oil pencils are iffy. Uh, the Marco Renoirs are too. Um, the whole thing with it is though, like you can use this for more than just erasing. So let's say I wanted to create a highlight here. I could just like barely touch the paper with the eraser, and it would take some of the color out and leave a highlight behind. So this was like five dollars on Amazon, and it came with thirty extra erasers. They're really easy. You just pop this little metal thing out. And there it is. And so when your eraser runs low, you just move it up a little bit, put it back in there, slide it back in the nozzle. And that's really all there is to this. This is another one of my favorite tools. Um, I, I don't know how I lived before I got this thing. So this is definitely something really cool to have around. Um, if you don't have one and you're serious about drawing or even adult coloring, uh, this is definitely something you want to look into. Do be aware, though, that when you use this on certain types of paper, like right now I'm using cardstock for this. I printed this myself on cardstock. Um, it, it'll ruin the tooth of your paper if you erase in the same spot very much or for very long or if you push on it very hard it'll ruin the tooth of your paper and then when you go to lay a uh, color back over that spot that you've erased it, it just won't go down right so that's something that you need to keep in mind and that's true of any eraser um, not just the electric ones so there's something else to, to remember some other little tools that I like to keep handy are these and these are blending stumps basically they are rolled up pieces of paper that are pointed at either end and you just use these like so um, you know we, we color a spot here we'll like look at the spot here that I've already colored let me zoom in a little bit once you've got the color saturated and you've got all your color laid down that you want Basically, you're just going to take your blending stump and you're going to rub over it. Now, this works better dry for like actual graphite pencils. So, like if you sketch or draw, these are going to come in a lot handy, a lot more handy for those. Another thing that you can do with these, and actually what I do when I choose to use the blending stump, um, is I will actually dip mine in the trusty game saw. So, you just put the tip of the stump down in, wedge it in between the cotton balls, move it around a little bit. And now you have, you can you can see the color difference. That's because my blending stump's been saturated with that Gamsol. And now if I put it on my paper, and you can just watch that color move. See how I'm pulling that color out into the blank space? That's the beauty of the Gamsol. That's why I love these. These things are great. They come in all kinds of different sizes. Um, I think I picked mine up at Walmart for like four dollars and it came with ten different pieces. So yeah, I have this size blending stump and there's a little tiny blending stump. And they also come with these things called tortillions. I think that's how you say it. These are also rolled paper, but they're hollow at one end. Um, so I, I'm not sure really what the difference is between them. I know the blending stumps, I found that they last longer. Um, now, an issue you're going to run into with the blending stump is if you look really closely, you see the color that's left behind on that stump and my camera just absolutely refuses to focus on it. There's color left behind. Now if you go to dip that back in Gamsol and rub another part of the paper, you're going to end up with uh, that color wherever you happen to put this particular blending stump. So another thing that you're going to want to pick up while you're out and you're picking up your blending stumps at Walmart, run over to the hardware section and get some really cheap inexpensive sheets of sandpaper and I bought the finest grit that I could find uh, just so I don't tear them up and basically you're just going to rub your stump over it and I like to twirl mine because it kind of keeps the tip from getting gross and then if your tip gets feathered out a little bit like mine has uh, you, you can either just rub it off gently or uh, you can take a pair of clippers or an exacto knife and trim that off but yeah I, I absolutely love these things I adore them they're great little tools to keep around um, when I'm doing more delicate work, I prefer the paintbrush with the Gamsol. Um, when I'm doing something that's going to require some pretty hardcore blending, these are the way to go. So there's another little tool that I like to keep in my arsenal. Um, I know a lot of people like the Posca pens, the Posca paint pens. Um, me, I find those a little bit uh, on the spendier side. So I have a Sharpie, oil-based white paint pen. Um, and this does a pretty much the same thing that the Pasca or Uni Pasca does. It's probably not as high quality, um, but I, I find it works basically. You shake it up, pop the top off, and it has a super 
super duper fine tip on it. Uh, you actually have to press down on it to get the paint to come out. Yeah, so that's how that works. You use that to put. You can use it to write over permanent marker. You can use it to write over color pencil. Um, it's a little iffy with the Prismacolor color pencil just because they're so soft and they leave so much stuff behind on the paper. Um, you really need to get it flowing before you try to put it over that type of color pencil. Otherwise, you're going to run into some problems with it more than likely. Uh, yeah, this is the Sharpie uh, paint pen, uh, and I use it where most people would use the Uni Pasca. Um, let me see. I wasn't quite prepared for all of this today, to be completely honest with you. So I think I'm actually missing a few things that I wanted to show you. Uh, the Jelly Roll white pens, I use the Jelly Roll white gel pens, I use those as well. Those are some of my uh, best friends. The backgrounds for my, uh, for my pictures that I do. So like, of course I'm not going to do it with this one because this whole thing will be filled in and then the out outside is going to leave white. These are soft pastels that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Uh, these were like five or six bucks, I think. Um, basically, what I do with these, let's see if I can give you like a really quick demonstration. I don't think I have any cotton balls handy just right in case I do. I have one right there. So basically, what I do with these when I want to do a background on my picture. And I know a lot of people do their backgrounds first. I do not. I color my picture first. And I make sure that there is no white space left on my page. Um, because once all that white space has been filled in with colored pencil and there's no wax, it's all covered in wax or oil, the pastel won't go on over that. Not that the soft, chalkier pastels won't. So basically what I do when I'm ready to do a background is I'll take my pastel stick out like this and I'll take uh, my X-Acto knife and I'll just kind of shave it. See how the dust is going onto the paper? Just give me just a second. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. So there's how you do that. Let me zoom in just a little. Alright, we put the thing back on here because I'm kind of clumsy, so we'll put that away. <laughs> Alright, well once you have your uh, pastel dust on your paper, you take a cotton ball, just like this, and you just rub it around. And that's really all you do. And it makes a gorgeous, soft effect. And like I said previously, if all of your white space is covered in at least one or two layers of pencil, you're not going to run into any issue where this is going to stick to your drawing or where you've already colored. So this is a really fantastic thing. It's really super cheap. Um, if you wanted more detailed lines, of course, you could take your pastel and draw, but then it's going to get down in the tooth of the paper and you're not going to be able to move it around so much. I've used Q-tips to get into really tight spaces. If you go to like your local CVS or Walgreens or what, Rite Aid, you can find certain types of Q-tips that have a pointed end that kind of actually looks a lot like this. The end of the Q-tip is pointed and that will let you get in those really small spaces. For me personally, I don't, I don't really care too much about that. I just like the cloudy effect in the background to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, in my portfolio here, I have a one that I've done this way. Um, this is a drawing of a mermaid by Selena Finnish. This is a sample that I took from her Etsy page from a book called Mermaid's Grayscale Coloring Edition. Um, so this was done on grayscale, which is why it looks so detailed. I do not have this type of talent. Um, with grayscale, basically, you're just using your uh, lights, mediums, and darks, and you're tracing, kind of coloring over uh, the darker areas and the darker colors and the lighter, uh, lighter color, lighter areas and the lighter colors. Um, basically, you know, that's how I did this background. If you really look at it, um, and this is all purple pastel, and I, of course, I chose purple because there's not really much purple elsewhere in the picture. Purple's a nice, uh, cool color, um, so that brings all the blues forward to the front, and it really makes this mermaid look like she's um, she's she's really just right there in front of you. I, I love Selena Finnish's art. Um, I, she's just absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I have to make it a point to go back to her Etsy page and order some more of her work just for the grayscale coloring because it's just so much fun. I highly recommend her. And no, she, I'm not sponsoring her in any way. Um, but yeah, so there's that was just an example of how you can use pastels to make your work better. All right, finally, aside from uh, all the other 
goodies and junk and stuff that I've showed you here today. My last thing is probably the funniest of all, and I know that it makes uh, makes people laugh, and that's this. Now, when you're working on something, right? So let's say I'm, I'm coloring this. I'm coloring this, and I'm doing uh, these little pieces right here. There are two different colors, a pink and a yellow, that go right there. As a matter of fact, here's the light pink, here's the dark pink, and here's the yellow. So when you're working on something, keeping all of your tools together is important. Knowing which colored pencils you've been working with is important. And this is actually a popsicle mold. This is a frozen ice pop mold that I picked up at my local Dollar Tree like five years ago uh, for a buck. I, there, actually, there may have been two in the package for a dollar, and they have these little things that fit down on them. You fill them with, you know, juice or whatever, and you put the lid on, and you stick it in the freezer, and then the top sticks. It's like a popsicle holder. Um, we haven't used these in years. I found it in my cabinet. This makes the perfect little tray that I can use for whatever I'm working on at that exact moment. So for this particular thing that I'm working on right now, I've been using. Um, my paint brushes, of course, with my Gamsol, so those are all over here. And because they're in this tray, these because these brushes are in this tray, I know that they need to be washed when I'm finished, because this is what I'm using currently. At the end of the day, everything that's in this tray will either get washed or restocked if I'm finished doing what I'm doing. Um, if not, I'll just move it off to the side, so I can when I come back tomorrow, I'll know that I need all these pencils and tools. To continue doing what I was doing. So this this is really groovy. If you can go to your local Dollar Tree and find some of these, these will help you so much. This is like the best cool little trick I've ever ever used. Um, I saw some other YouTuber who did it and I remember thinking, how oh, that is really cool that you do that. And then lo and behold when I was uh, fishing, the, uh, fishing the little container out for my Gamsol out of the kitchen, I came across this. And I'm like, well, holy cow, here we go. It's something to keep my pencils in. So now it just sits right beside my little, um, it sits right beside my little caddy here, if I can show you. Right here, right beside my little caddy. That's where it goes. And so um, I can reach what I need to reach at all the time. And I don't have to guess at what I was or wasn't using either because it's all right there. Well guys, there you have it. I've talked to you for just almost 20 minutes about the little gadgets and things that I use when I'm uh, when I'm doing uh, coloring or drawing or sketching and things like that. So hopefully you guys can take some ideas from this and you know maybe you have some stuff laying around your house that, that you know you can get out and use to store your stuff. Um, if not, Amazon's a great place. Guys, I know Hobby Lobby and I know a lot of the stuff that they have there, they're usually really expensive on. Um, like the Prismacolor color pencils are almost $200 for the full set there. I ordered my full set of $150 from Amazon for less than half that. So I realize that Hobby Lobby is incredibly expensive. However, they have sales and you only want to get things from Hobby Lobby when they're on sale. So you go to Hobby Lobby and you go through their, um, their like storage stuff. I think was what they had on sale the first time I ever went in there and I picked up some excellent storage containers. Um, I was in there this past um, like three or four days ago and they, right now they're having a sale on all their paper crafting stuff. So I picked up a bunch of different colors of cardstock to put in my printer for my stuff. I got some grays, I got some blacks and tans and ivories and uh, you know just really cool things I probably wouldn't have otherwise because it was like 50% off. So, you know, definitely, if, if you're interested in tools like these and you want to find some cool, cool stuff that's going to make your uh, art experience better, I mean, absolutely 100% check out Hobby Lobby, but don't buy it unless it's on sale. Um, and if you haven't yet and you sign up for their email newsletter, you're going to get 40% coupons, like, all the time. Um, I think they send me one, like, every single day. I get 40% off one regular priced item. So if something I want isn't on sale at that point in time, I can still get 40% off, and it doesn't matter what it is. Matter of fact, this portfolio, and this is huge. This is actually, I think, like 11 by 14 or something. Let's see if I can show you. Yes, I'm wearing a pretty fast bear shirt. So this is actually really, really big. Um, I forget the size of it. I know that this this paper is 14 inches long, I want to say. I think it's like 9 by 14. So this is, this is pretty big. Um, this, actually, these are cheap at Hobby Lobby because you can't add more pages to them. I think this was like... $14 or something brand new uh, uh, regular price and I had a 40% off coupon 
So I saved quite a bit of money and I got it for almost half price. Um, and I just got it. I haven't, I haven't really put anything in it other than my mermaid that I'm so proud of. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, you know, I'm just pointing, I'm trying to help you guys out. Don't, don't go to Hobby Lobby and pay full price for anything there ever, 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 because you'll be sorry that you did. Um, some other things are just absolutely ridiculously priced and it makes me want to cry. Um, other than that, guys, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Um, I just wanted to come, come and talk to you guys a little bit about some of the stuff that I use. Um, if you're interested in, in art and things like this, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, share this video with your friends and family members who are also into adult coloring and art and things like that. Um, there's just so much more to come. I'm, I've contacted a bunch of different manufacturers for art supplies, trying to see if I can get some samples uh, so I can you know, do some more product reviews of things that, of course, I don't have yet. Um, but yeah, there's going to be all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, subscribe, like, go to the Facebook uh, page at Simple Art for Adults. Uh, visit the website, simpleartforadults.com. There you're going to find my blog. Um, and that's where I kind of like write about the different things I put in the videos that are posted here. So if you'd rather read it than listen to me ramble on, it's all right there. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I will be back with more for you very soon. Have a good, have a good one.